What keeps you awake at night? Sea levels are rising globally. Fears fueled by horror stories. Among the worst flu season in a decade, and it hasn't peaked yet. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Another series of deadly terror attacks. I don't want to be blamed if Do you it. cannot get to sleep tonight. Welcome to Things That Keep Me Up at Night. I'm Olivia. I am Brooke. I'm Brianna. And um, we're about to talk about a new topic this week. So last, not well, last couple weeks we talked about groupthink, which was dark. <laughs> um, this week we decided to lighten the mood a little bit. Talk about cults, which really isn't a far, super um, light. far out, too far out in the left field. You know what I mean? They're, they're, yeah, yeah. I think they're, they're related. They're related for yeah. sure. Um, honestly, very relieved that we did group think before I did this mm. because I think I was able to come at my topic with a little bit more empathy. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. considering like these people don't know what the fuck they're doing. Well, and um, that's something I want to say going into it too is like that the people who are parts like, of of cults, no matter what cult it is, unless you're, like, the actual leader, I feel like it's very easy to take a third-person point of view and say, like, why the fuck wouldn't they just get out, you know? Like, why the fuck wouldn't they just leave or, like, realize what was going on? But I think... Yeah, it's real easy from, like, sitting on your couch shoveling chips into your face. Yeah, absolutely. Shoveling vegetable pasta covered in pesto. Mm. (laughs) Shout out to me. (laughs) Shut up. Oh, that sounds so good, Olivia. (laughs) That that sounds bum. Um, But no, I... uh, But I think what we need to remember is that we're not at all taking um, the mickey out of people who are actually, like, participating in the cult or who are um, a part or, like, members of the cult. Because those are people who go through extreme emotional abuse. You know what I mean? It's the For it's sure. the cult leaders and the concept of the cult that we're just absolutely baffled by. So, um, Olivia, do you want to finally tell us what cult you're doing your, uh, your stuff on? I'm on the um, edge of my seat. Uh, yeah, also almost released to Brooke what my topic was. <laughs> uh, we were having like a deep heart to heart, and like at the end, I was gonna close it up, and um, I was <laughs> I was about to say, "Well, I hope me talking about the Westboro Baptist Church cheers ah, you yes. up tomorrow." <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I where? <laughs> and I said West, and like you were talking over me, so you paused and you went what? And I went. Not no, there. no, 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 Don't no. worry about it. Yeah, because um, all, all of our topics are surprises, too. We need to we need to recognize that, that, like, we don't know. We don't know what the other person yeah. is going to be doing research on, which makes makes it all that much it's more exciting. It's just like Christmas. Yeah. I yeah. think we we're all gonna, love getting the Westboro get Baptist s- Church for Christmas. Yeah, instead of... We're going to get some letters. Yeah, instead of, <laughs> um, instead of opening a, a brand new bike on Christmas, Tommy, you got to open... Uh, internalized hatred so let's uh here you go he starts crying oh. and you're like you know this is why i never fucking buy you presents you don't appreciate a single thing i give for you gratitude in this family oh, I'm so sad. no but honestly um i was about to actually um uh westboro baptist church was my second choice i was about to text um oh hell yeah so i'm, I'm so glad you're doing it oh Oh. Noise. Noise. You are going to end this feeling so sad. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, man. I wanted to hate them, but I can't. Okay, so. Oh, no. What? <laughs> That's not good. So, it all began at the East Side Baptist Church in 1921. Hmm. Oh, that's so, so much older than I thought. Yeah. I know. Um, so the East Side Baptist Church is like a historical Baptist church. Right. Um, and it was famous. Oh, God. I'm really, this is like the only word that I know I'm going to fucking mispronounce. It's, it's spelled O-K-M-U-L-G-E-E. I'm going to say it's Okmulgee. Okmulgee? It's what it's spelled like. Okay. Okmulgee? I will take that. And believe right. it's in Oklahoma. Okay, that's what sure. that's what that's what matters. All right. So, to my understanding, um, that church wanted to establish a branch church. I don't understand how that works, but they wanted to establish a branch church in Topeka, Kansas. So, they established the Westboro Baptist Church in 1955, which is an offshoot of the East Side Baptist Church. Okay. Um, totally normal, just normal Baptist church. But when they appointed a certain colorful pastor uh, mm. by the name of Fred Phelps, Fred. he almost immediately broke ties with the Eastside Church. Um, mm. he, he, 
it, it's on Wikipedia that he broke ties, but I just have a feeling that they broke ties <laughs> based on what we're about to talk about. Uh, right. So let's start with the history of Fred Phelps. Fred Waldron really Phelps. Really quick, I, I looked up Akmulgi or whatever to find uh-huh. the, uh, the pronunciation. pronunciation, and the first two things that came up were five hours ago, deputies find remains that may belong to missing Akmulgi County man, and then woman arrested for the death of Akmulgi horse trainer. So that's super cool. Colorful past. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> so... Fred Waldron Phelps, great middle name, I just want to say, great middle name, was mm-hmm. was born November 13th, 1929, to Catherine Phelps and Fred Wayne Phelps in Meridian, Mississippi. Also, best name for a town. Like, side note, every time I say Meridian, I just feel, like, rolls off the tongue. Makes I, you feel good. I, don't, I, I know it's irrelevant, but I just, I felt like it needed to be said, because we need some good things in what I'm about to say. Um... So, uh, he was, a, he was the brother, uh, oldest brother of two children, mm. um, and at the age of six, his mom died, uh, from esophageal cancer. Oh, man, that's I'm, rough. So, I mean, that sucks. Um, and... <laughs> Which is what I say to everyone I encounter whose mothers die <laughs> of cancer. Oh, man. Oh, that, that sucks. sucks. <laughs> That's like bogus, my man. Shit. Oh, man. Um, this is what therapy has taught me when I'm trying to be sympathetic to people. I just say, man, that's that fucked sucks. up. That sucks. <laughs> We're really empathetic people. We are. Um, and so that's, that's tough. So, of course, this is a, this is a really important dynamic because I think it kind of like laid the foundation for Fred. Uh, his father was a, um, to my understanding, like a police officer for the railroad, um, and stereotypically wouldn't do much raising. That was the woman's job. So his mm. great aunt raised him, um, and his mm. father was pretty distant other than, you know, reprimanding him and like setting up, uh, expectations for what it was to be a man. Son, I will shake your hand on your 18th birthday, but that is the only physical touch that we will experience together <laughs> until that oh, moment. Oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> and like, anything more than that would be kind of gay. Gay? <laughs> <laughs> um, and like, he was a bright kid, which is also kind of disappointing because like, he graduated from high school at the age of 16. Oh. Whoa. He was sixth in his gra- like in the top like number sixth in his graduating class of about two hundred people, so it's pretty significant. Um, yeah. He participated in a shitload of social clubs. He was the president of the Youth People's Department of Central United Methodist Church. That's a that's a phrase. Um, Seriously, he was honored as the best drilled member of Mississippi's Junior State Guard, which is like kind of like a pre-military thing, right? <laughs> best drilled, am I right? <laughs> Ooh. Um, (laughs) We are mature here. So those last two are super important. And, like, again, I'm reading a lot out of his Wikipedia article. I could find literally nothing on his background. He's never written a biography, and he does, like, no interviews with anyone outside of the church. You're saying that... So my interpretation of this is his father, like, one of the two core things from his father are his Methodist faith and you know, stereotypical masculinity. His father's a police officer, for Christ's sake. So him being the president of a Methodist church group and being the best drilled member and basically a pre-military club was probably very important to his father. Um, And his dad actually secured him an an appointment to West Point, a really renowned military academy. Mm. Um, Read mixed things, but I think the most accurate is he failed the physical examination for the military academy. That's fair. That's Um, fair. Which... I mean, I would. Yeah, no, I, I I, 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 I definitely sympathize with that. But go on. Well, I don't think it was on purpose. Um, but he failed the physical examination, which I think, uh, kind of... I I think it was his watershed moment because he probably was a disappointment in his father's eyes because Mm. almost immediately after this, he was ordained a Southern Baptist at 17. So not... That's a little young. Yeah, also not Methodist, right? 
So kind of rejecting his father's faith. Um, He went to Bob Jones College, which little asterisk on this, just priming as far as like social stuff goes. This is a conservative, private, evangelical college that didn't admit black people until 1971. Right. And, (gasps) Hmm. and only admitted married black people from 1971 to 1975 until they were forced to admit black people. That's a, that's a real melting pot of diversity there. Oh, yes. Um, so, uh, at this point, it was kind of, you know, like I said, his watershed moment. He was in denial about failing West po- the West Point exam uh, because um, from what I understand and, like, all the other documentaries, um, they talk about how he, like, just didn't go. So I'm sure he's not open about him failing the exam. Um, he abandoned his Methodist faith. Both of these are very important to his father. Uh, and another one, his father remarried a divorcee. Um, So, uh, you know, as a mature adult, um, his response was to never contact anyone in his family again, and for the rest of his life would mail back letters they sent to him unopened. Mature. Mature. Um, Been there, am I right? You know, 17s. Everybody everybody goes through stuff. A literal child. Um, A a man-child. Yeah, and uh, he dropped out of college at Bob Jones after about a year. He attended John Muir College while street preaching. Um, we this is where pause, he got his... Pause. Street preaching? Yeah. Right, so he would literally stand outside of the, like, the college and would preach on how it's... <laughs> One of his things he was advocating against was premarital petting. <laughs> <laughs> process what you had just said and I was like no it couldn't possibly be that oh my god I literally that rendered me speechless I'm so sorry (laughs) that's never happened to me before he was literally he was interviewed on like for Time Magazine and was featured in Time Magazine for his like very conservative stance on premarital petting and like touching and stuff like that you Um, touched a titty no, going to none hell. of that. Well, because no, but um, if you touch a titty, then you touch other parts, and then when you touch other parts, then that's the devil's no. work. Petting so the, is you, wrong. So you're saying you're saying the titty is the gateway drug. Yes, yes, yes. Gotcha. Absolutely. Okay. My um, um, also that's important. He framed that Time article and kept it in his house for the rest of his life. Yikes! Yikes! So, yikes! Yikes! Gonna cool. make a prediction that this is where he got a taste of fame. <clears throat> um, sure, sure, sure. Met his and what, wife. And what gets him there? Met his wife there, which is okay. insane to me that he met a human woman. I don't. I was like, I gotta get with that right away. I, I just. Oh. How do you? I have I have many questions, but we have so much <laughs> to cover. Um, they married in okay. May of 1952 when he was 23 years old. Jesus. So that's. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, like, you said that he preached against uh, premarital petting, Mm -hmm. which I just have to sit in for a little bit. (laughs) Right. But I was imagining, like, a 45-year-old man standing on the the sidewalk, like, preaching against premarital petting. No, he was, like, 20, He was 22, 23, yeah. He was 22, a 22-year-old. That's me at the age I am now, standing on the sidewalk... (laughs) Telling other people that, just openly admitting that I don't fuck women. <laughs> yep. Oh my Met god. Met a woman. Oh. Uh, guess he figured out how to fuck her because. Okay, well, that's um, great. By the I'm time so that he became the pastor of the Westboro Baptist Church in 1955, three mm. years later, right? Mm. He already had two kids. Nope. By no. the age of 25. No, I uh, refuse. He procreated. Ugh. Um, not only, Brooke, not only did he <laughs> procreate, but he procreated 13 times. Stop yourself. Ah! He had a total of 13 kids. Ugh. I wish I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah, big mood. Um, mm, wow. He, so... This could, wow. He was appointed to the church, and at the time... Okay, maybe you, you can explain this to me. How is a church non-denominational? Usually that just means that they don't 
choose to conform to any one. Okay. I guess denomination. Yeah, it just it, it just varies like, from it's church to like church. Isn't, church. Yeah. yeah, if Baptist is in the name, then I would say that it was a Baptist church. But cool. Well, whatever. very quickly, it became very denominational. <laughs> <laughs> very fast. Um, he preached, uh, this might sound familiar, um, primitive Baptist theology. Do you know what that is? Oh, Jesus, it sounds awful can, and also oh, racist. I'm so sorry. It's... Can we, can we just pause yeah. for just a second, just to, to let me readjust myself to hear this out? Yeah. All right, you can go. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's called Christian literalism. Does that sound oh, a little... Oh, yes. Oh, fuck yes. Holy yeah, shit. no, this yeah. is exactly so what this they, is. Ugh. They believe, like, 100% that everything in the Bible is verbatim true. Like, literally yeah. true. All of it. Like, mm. actually a boat, actually walked on water, actually, like, all of it. 100% true. I like how your only reference to the Ark is actually a boat. I don't know. If, let me get... <laughs> I haven't read the Bible. I have no other examples. Actually swallowed by a whale. No, no. Whatever. Legitimately, (laughs) but um, it's 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 really funny because like I've I when I first heard about that like um I was I was watching a documentary with my father in the room, and I laughed and he went, "No, that's real." And Mm. I went, "Really?" And he went, "No, I know people who are that." And I went. Oh, yeah. At the, yeah, at the so church I went to, that was something that like it, it wasn't unheard of. We were never told that. Uh, oh, everything in the Bible literally happened because like that would be a little much for a lot of the the filthy casuals that were in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, there there was a lot of talk that was like you can't pick which parts of the Bible you believe. Oh you yeah. Know? That was yeah. Okay. So anyway, moving yeah. on. So. Um, <laughs> also want to add just this is this is also so important because i don't want to make anyone feel bad this man is not a representation of ba- like baptist faith oh absolutely um, not know that because the baptist world alliance and the southern baptist convention both renounced him <laughs> And distance Go themselves figure. from him. Uh, how old was he when this happened? God, I don't know. Like, again, very hard to find exact dates. Sure. I just know that this happened. Um, I just also, like that they were like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, man. We are not with him. <laughs> <We're>... <laughs> Want to know who else isn't with him? Who? Tell me. The KKK. God. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just need to know. The KKK legitimately released a statement that they're like, hey, this dude, way too far. Fuck. Um. Okay, uh, alright. I like. I can't, he I can't get over that one. That? Just like um, the fact that they're having clan meetings, you know, and they're talking about all the horrible shit. And hatred that they have in their hearts, and they're like, "But we're not that guy." You know what I mean? We never. They're like we're not the goddamn dudes. Jews forcing us to not procreate, and they're like, "So, um, hey, I wanted to bring up, uh, we've we've all heard of Fred Phelps," and they're like, "Oh yeah, no, we, we yeah, need yeah, to release yeah. a statement about yeah, that no, because that's that uh, that's just too far." No. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Jesus. So, yeah, so tell me, like, what exactly was it that he believed that was too far for? The, the KKK. KKK themselves. Well, so here's the thing, and like I'm gonna go into <laughs> it, right? Because this right. isn't this wasn't like immediately after he like was part of the church. This was like mm-hmm. a very very gradual increase in like the vitriol that As he it would, would be. spew, right? Sure. Um, I'm gonna assume most of this happened in the 90s, and we'll get into that why. But like, I I just also wanted to add this because um, the pop the Southern Poverty Law Center considers the Westboro Baptist Church, and I quote, okay, the most obnoxious and rabid hate group in America. Woo. Not wrong. Not wrong. Um, so the reason I consider it a cult is obviously, like, to me, um, cults are centered around, like, one main object, figure, or devotion. Right. Like, the actual definition it includes that. It has to be surrounding a figure or an object. And okay. I would say the object is hate. Damn. Um, but additionally, his son, who has now left the church, we'll talk about Nathan later, um, said he believes it meets the classification of a cult because it has a charismatic leader, um, mm. complete isolation, 
functions on the us versus them mentality and all of the congregants have a willingness to act upon what the leader says without question. Oh, that just gave me um, chills. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. His son said that about oh, him. Fuck. Which is fucked. And we're going to talk about why. Um, so, back to Phelps, right? Taking a little caveat. We had to go talk about that as like a primer. Right. Back to him. He earns his law degree in 1964 mm. from Washburn okay. University, focusing on civil rights, which is ha. wild. Not Would ha. not have predict that. Um, yeah. So by this, I mean he represented black people who felt like they faced discrimination. Um, and according to his daughter, who's in the church, so grain of salt. Still? Yeah, she's still in the church. Okay. Um, she says that Phelps' firm actually represented so many black clients who were suing for discrimination that they represented one third of all civil rights cases in the state of Kansas. That's straight up definitely untrue. I have no idea. I literally can't check it. But, a third? Well, <laughs> and I... Like, you couldn't do that. And like, that's I, not physically possible. I want to add that this is okay. from the same interview, and I'm literally quoting her. I want to make that clear <laughs> because I'm going to say her entire quote to make a point in the same interview where she claimed that he made up a third of the clients. Uh-oh. She also claimed that... They would drive down the street in their car, and people would call them nigger lovers. So, uh, you might wonder why... Well, I'm convinced. <laughs> I don't know about you. Well, well that, that does it. Um, oh, and uh, some other stuff, little caveats and stuff he did. Uh, he sued Ronald Reagan, claiming that his appointment of a U.S. ambassador to the Vatican violated the separation of church and state. I mean... Uh, Would not have pegged him to do that, but all right. Um, Sure. He assisted in a great number of, uh, like, suits from black and female clients facing discrimination in the school and workplace. Quick question. Did he win any? He he won (laughs) so many, Brooke, that he received awards from both the Greater Kansas City Chapter of Blacks in Government Uh and... The Bonner Springs branch of the the NAACP. I bet for, those groups are like looking at him now, and they're like, "Oh ooh, boy, yeah, yeah. we were a little lenient." What the um, fuck? I wish I hadn't done that. Um, so also, also pairing with this, because uh, that was from the Wikipedia article. I would okay. like to pair it with uh, Nathan, his son who left the church. Right. Also says, well, he was instrumental and like he was, he's not going to discount that. He right. definitely called his clients stupid niggers as Ooh. soon as they left the office, which makes sense why his sister Shirley disagrees with him and is very comfortable using the N word. Sure. So uh, we keep going. It doesn't end. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just at the verbal stuff right now. So. Oh, oh yeah. Um, so classy he, guy. He was eventually disbarred. Not for the reason you'd think, though. Okay, tell me why, Olivia. So, <laughs> God, Jesus Caroline God. Brady um, was a court reporter, and he sued her for not giving him a court transcript to be like in a quote unquote timely manner, and sued her for twenty two thousand dollars. Are you? I don't know. So. On the stand, he claimed that she was a hostile witness. Ooh. All right, all right. This is where it gets uncool. Called her a slut. Wanted mm-hmm. to use former ex-boyfriends <clears throat> to slander her. Accused her of enjoying perverse sexual acts and reduced her to tears. Now. On the stand? On the stand. Uh, Question. What does this have to do with court reporting? That was, Mary. uh... Now, you might think, okay, so this is what he got. This is what he got disbarred for. No! That's, that was apparently fine. Um, <laughs> the National Bar Associ- Association's like, you know, uncool. <laughs> You're on thin ice. But, but we're, we're okay. What, what did he yeah, call her? But did let's he, see um, if you have some evidence for that. What did he call her? So, did he call her a bitch? No. He just called her a slut. slut. Yeah. Oh, well, oh. Beck- 
Let's be real, all right? He's not, well, he's I mean, not does he have evidence? evidence? Yeah. Was she a slut? <laughs> <laughs> you know that. <laughs> you know that that's probably how it went down, too. That's what's fucked up. <laughs> well, was know, she? Um, that blouse was pretty low oh, cut, God. if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it was fucking Jesus Kansas. Christ. Um, so, so bad. So she, so he claimed that he had eight witnesses that would okay. prove all of this. Right. That she was a slut? That she was a slut. <laughs> um, and she actually got signed statements from every single one of them that said that he had never once contacted them to be a witness. Interesting. That's what disbarred him. Good. Perjury. Wow. That'll do it. That'll do That'll it. That'll do it. Um, and also I want to, I want to, I want to we'll put a little caveat on this. This seems like this had nothing to do with court reporting and was a vendetta against her. So officially in 1989, remember that this complaint was filed in 1977. In 1989, he was disbarred and could not practice law in the state of Kansas or federally. Thank law career was over. God. Yeah. No. Nope. I'd say that's pretty bad. Bad. Well, if he was still a lawyer, he would be doing lawyer things. Fair but here's right. where my theory comes into play. Mm -hmm. So he was disbarred in 1989. Right. Uh -huh. He can't practice law. Most of the church is left. At this point, the majority of the church is just his family and friends. He doesn't really have any other job prospects. Uh, he's a preacher. I'm sure he's not making a ton of money. So what does he do? Just two years after his disbarment, in 1991, the protests began. Oh. So, uh, Libby Phelps, another ex-member, who I believe is his granddaughter, um, mm -hmm. she said that these protests came when uh, he was walking with his... God, they had to be grandsons. He, he was walking with his grandchildren, and one of them was propositioned by a homosexual. Now... We don't know if that's true. This is from their their perspective, right? And Libby was yeah. told this is how it began. Dude so probably I don't smiled know if at this him. is true. Um, yeah, didn't right, say no homo. Just said hi. They're like, oh my god, fucking homos everywhere. Wow. Get out of my pants. Um, right. <laughs> so uh, this is a Gage Park. A and again another caveat: what they claim to be a known homosexual hangout. I don't know if it is, because I'm not from Kansas, Who's but that's what they claimed. Um, so as a result, the church began doing what they claimed to be peaceful sidewalk demonstrations in the park. Um, what did they do there, Olivia? Well, they protested homosexuality. Um, just as which, a concept? Just like, it's ne it's always <laughs> been discussed negatively in the church, so that sure. wasn't new. Um, but they also claimed they were petitioning the government to quote-unquote clean up the park as the gays were trying to, and I'm not exaggerating, they were allegedly trying to lure children into bathrooms to have sex with them. Apparently it's part of the gay agenda, uh, right? I always wondered why there was such a huge crossover with people being against homosexuality and then, like, conflating it with pedophilia. I, like, I don't know. Actually, yeah. I have a theory for that, and we'll okay. talk about it later. Um, can, I, can I make so, an interjection here? Um, yes. Sure. Li literally, all of this shit started with a man at a park possibly making advances at these two boys, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just, just <laughs> wild. Just, all right, just wanted to clarify. Right. Yes. Um, so, um, according to oh. Mark Potok, a senior fellow from the Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, he, apparently, according to him, Phelps was always obsessed with human sexuality going back like six decades. So again, this is not new, but it sounds to me like this is an issue of his masculinity with his dad. Most likely. Right. Um, so... Actually, funny enough, the protest didn't initially begin with, like, the God hates fags signs that, like, mm -hmm. we think of today. It starts with God hates gays. Um, and they deliberately started using fag because they wanted to shock people who saw yeah, it. Yeah, that, 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 that gets the clicks, my dudes. That, that, right. That, um, that is... And they... Ooh. Oh, you're saying... I was just gonna... Might be... Huh? Never mind. <laughs> what? 
You were going to say something? Sorry. We'll edit this out in post. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Or I'll leave it. Um, but their end goal was to ensure that no homosexuals were allowed in the park, and by extension, that homosexuality wouldn't be tolerated by the U.S. government. A reasonable request. But of course. Um, so What's more American than... Than no gays. based on differences. <sighs> uh, wow. But so anyway. really accurate. Um, <laughs> the funeral protests began in 1998. Wait, I'm so sorry. Uh, so I forgot about when did that. the when did the incident in the park happen? It happened maybe 1990, 1991. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> but at this point, this was like a Kansas central thing. Like this wasn't sure. national news. This is the one that launched them into the national eye, and it's right. when the W when the WBC, which I'm just gonna call it that because it's gonna make my life easier. They held a protest of the funeral of 21-year-old Matthew Shepard, who had been beaten to death for being gay. Yeah, no, I... Oh, Jesus. Um, no, not... They held signs that said, Matthew is in hell and God hates gays. Uh, um, so, I don't know how much you guys know about Matthew Shepard, um, but his death was... Um, violent. Violent. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into too many details because it's really upsetting but if you guys want to look into it um it's violent it's and it's it's just it's just a hate crime it's just it's just the most it's disgusting tragic. it's one of the most disgusting things i've ever seen um anyway but uh so that's that's yeah. something yeah um they so, they actually this is so mm-hmm. fucked up they actually had a counter on their website at some point and i saw this in a documentary and i couldn't find it on their website anymore. Um, yeah. But it was a counter counting how many days since Matthew Shepard had died, and it was titled How Many Days Matthew Has Been in Hell. <gasps> really fucked up, right? Um, also, just to elucidate the funeral thing, because like a lot of people um, think that they are just doing it just to be disrespectful, but uh, Louis Thoreau. Um, he was on a tri- he he was uh, the director of the most hated family in America, and he went on a trip with Shirley, um, one of his one of Fred's daughters. Um, mm-hmm. They literally went out of state to protest a funeral of a Marine veteran, and he asked her like, "Don't you think it's disrespectful to um, protest somebody's funeral?" Right? right? And she says, "No, of course not, because they're worshiping the dead, which she believed to be is a form of idolatry." So like. That's one of those things where, like, again, we're gonna we're, we're gonna realize really fast that these people really genuinely a hundred percent believe in everything that they're saying. So to mm-hmm. them, they do not think they're doing something right, wrong. which is a cult like mentality. This is, it's right. a cult. Sure. It's a cult. Yeah. Super fucked up. Just I just wanted to add that as like a caveat because like they really really think they're doing God's work here, um, and then you know this launched them into the public eye, and then they started ramping it up. Um, so they ramped it up by starting to protest veterans' funerals, um, and that was because they believe they're fighting for a quote-unquote doomed country, so are therefore by proxy bad. Interesting. Hmm. I don't know. Um, a really significant protest was the protest of Matthew Snyder's funeral in 2006. Um, he'd been a Marine before he died in a Humvee accident in Iraq, and the church held up signs at funerals that said, thank God for dead soldiers. Mm. Usually, that's so interesting. Usually, like, crazy conservatism and patriotism go kind of hand in hand. No, And in this case, it just doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, no. In in this instance, it's... They're fighting for a a doomed nation and therefore are bad. Interesting. Um, Another thing that they added in there that was in another documentary I watched where... Uh, There was an attempt to kill the people in the Westboro Baptist Church. Church. They, like, planted a pipe bomb in the church, and they didn't die. Just, like, some people who wanted them to die. So somebody somebody planted a pipe bomb in the Westboro Baptist Church, and Uh they all lived. Who was already protesting veterans' funerals. Right. Um, And they didn't die. And so now they're making the argument that the IEDs used in the Middle East to kill people and, you know, kill soldiers Mm -hmm. are the act of God to kill people in revenge of trying to kill the Westboro Baptist Church who are just trying to preach God's word. Right. Even though soldiers had been dying anyway. Yeah. Right. No, 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 but Brooke, God put 
the those <sighs> those weapons there because the Westboro Baptist Church is just that special in God's eyes. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't understand right. that. Thank you for clearing right. that up, Bree. Uh-huh. I'm yes. so glad I get it now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Fuck me. That's... <sighs> I have good news and bad news. Uh-oh. Oh, great. Let's, Let's start get with into... the bad news. No, no, I'm gonna... I have it set up. Let's start with the good news, right? Good news. Great. No, I'm, uh, I'm, gonna, good I'm, news. Gonna, I'm gonna step out on this one. Let's, let's start with the good news. <laughs> uh, good news <laughs> is Matthew's father father of the the marine veteran won a 10.9 million dollar suit against them bad news did he win he won oh thank god okay bad news is that their response was they made a video that's literally like five minutes long thanking like the u.s government for fining them 10.9 million dollars because of um because like that's proof that they're speaking God's word. Um, literally the most fucked up thing that they say in this video um, is one lady says $10.9 million isn't going to bring dead tr- soldiers back to life. And like, this is like old people saying it, but there's also like a 16 year old girl that's like, thank God for $10.9 million suit. Right. Just and fucked. like she doesn't know. No, like oh my god. All right, so we're getting in deep now. Um, since then, I'm just gonna do a quick summary because I don't have the time to go into all of this. Um, the Westboro Baptist Church has participated in a slew of protests, including but not limited to protesting Lady Gaga for being pro LGBTQ or being a fag enabler oh. is what they call her. Yeah, oh. they got a term for everything, don't they? Bag enablers. Um, no, I I watched an interview with Westboro Baptist Church, and they repeatedly used that phrase over and over again. Um, I bet they did. Oh. Um, protesting funerals of military veterans and war heroes for being fag enablers because they're fighting for a country that legalized gay marriage. Every time you say that, I think you're gonna say faginators. Stop. I wish. <laughs> I like to think uh, it's, it's like a Terminator, but with like gay men, you know? It's right. I wish that's what we were talking about yeah, today. Me too. Um, yeah. protesting, funerals, so cool. protesting funerals of the victims of the Handy sh- Sandy Hook shooting, saying that what they the deserve- What the fuck? Why? Because they deserve to die, Brooke, because the U.S. and that state specifically legalized gay marriage, so God <gasps> killed them as revenge. Letting it sink in. All right, keep going. Riding the wave. Um, protesting Broadway shows. Obviously, gay is sure. so bad. Right, gay is. Broadway is gay. <laughs> this so. one is wild. Um, <sighs> protesting Swedish vacuum cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> and so, the Swedish government had arrested a priest for spouting homophobic <laughs> teachings because that's yeah. illegal in Sweden. Sure. Therefore, the entire country of Sweden is doomed. Um, wait, wait, wait. So, so they, they protested Swedish vacuums, yeah? Yeah. They, they did not protest Swatch, for instance? No, no, the vacuums. Just the vacuums. The vacuums. I mean, and let's be honest, vacuums are pretty gay. What else so. sucks except for the gays? I think, <laughs> I honestly think the worst part about this is think about all the business they're losing I know. Oh my, oh my god. god. The whole cool country is going to go underwater. It's crazy. <laughs> so, so, this is from their website. I'm going to quote them from their website. Fantastic. WBC engages in daily peaceful sidewalk demonstrations opposing the homosexual lifestyle of soul damning, nation destroying filth. Okay, but. We display large, colorful signs containing Bible words and sentiments, including. Again, I want to say this is. Everything they have typed up. Ready? God hates fags. Fags mm-hmm. hate God. AIDS cure fags. Thank God for AIDS. Fags burn in hell. God is not mocked. Fags are nature freaks. God gave fags up. No special laws for fags. Fags doom nation. Thank God for dead soldiers. Fag troops. God blew up the troops. God hates America. America is doomed. The world is doomed. Etc. I have never I, said fag more in my entire life than I, I have reading this. I, What's the etc? 
I can hear like just firecrackers in my in my ears right now. Just I have more bullet. No, sound. wait. Can we pause? Can we pause? Can we pause? Uh huh. This is. I because I, I mean. There, there, there are so many things to dive into. One, like that's just horrendous, in in every single way. I, I'm speechless. I can't even acknowledge it. I have more. Oh. Okay, more so here's phrases? some that they didn't have on their website that I saw that were just so insane. Like this is like like a like a crazy NPC from a Fallout video game. Like, <laughs> and these are just little clips that he says. Um, here are some of my choice favorites that just were just especially crazy to me that I needed to have. Planes crash, God laughs in response to 9-11. Why? God Why? hates- Why? Why? I, 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 here we go, keep going. God hates Jews. <laughs> this one's- okay. This one's so funny. Jews killed Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kinda. Yeah? Question mark? Um, here we go. Not God, God exactly. hates exactly. Not, not exactly. I don't know why we're trying God to reason divorce. through this. God hates divorce. Okay, that's pretty no, tame. No, God, God, um, God hates divorce. Ugh, okay, all continue. Right. God, thank that's... God for 9-11. Oh. Mm. Thank God for IEDs. And this one <clears> is just... Don't... I don't get it at all. Jew fags. Like, that sounds like something that I'd hear on, like, a Discord <laughs> server. Like, if I was playing, like, Minecraft or something. I'm pretty sure I have been called that by a 12-year-old Overwatch player. <laughs> pretty sure. Oh my god, it's just insane! It's just insane. What? Um, so... What? Okay, here's my question, just, just real quick. They seem to be honing in on the 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 gay portion I don't know of what America. That's how it all started. Think about That's how it all started. Yeah, what could, I don't know where I'm getting this from, but I just get the idea that perhaps they're focusing kind of hard on on homosexuals, and um, I'm just sort of wondering where the rest of the Bible is um. in in their. In their oh, hey, um, agenda. Well, Brooke, there you go. Flips Here, I'm gonna... furiously through my notes. No, no, Brooke, Brooke, I'm going to answer the question for you. This is where it is, right? They're uh, protesting funerals because of the shit about in the Bible about um, uh, celebrating the dead, right, Olivia? Mm-hmm. Um, they're also... Um... That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's all of it. That's all. That's all, folks. And then the... Da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, I'm l- currently looking at their website because I hate myself. And Don't do that. I, I, th- that's it. That's the, their entire website is just gay. the gay shit. Yeah, I, I honestly think it comes down to the masculinity thing. But I also yeah. have other theories about this that we're going to get into when we talk about the kids. Yeah. Which is going to bum you out. So let's transition, boys. All right, let's do it. Let's, let's talk about the kids. Um, I'd rather not. Thank you. So Libby Phelps, uh, I talked about her earlier. Um, she was in a documentary brainwashed by vice. Very good. It was a two parter. Um, she said she started protesting at the age of eight, which by looking at some pictures actually seems very old. Um, Mm -hmm. most kids start younger. Tim Phelps, uh, another ex member of the church, I believe also his grandson, Uh, said in the same interview that kids were so young that they would ask adults what their signs meant and then spew off the words without, like, really knowing what they said. Um, So another example is a documentary I saw, Fall from Grace, the one I bought a DVD for because I was so into this topic. Um, (laughs) There was one exchange where the interviewer asks kid, like, what his favorite sign is. Like, he asks a ton of the kids, "What, what is your favorite sign? And he okay. says his favorite sign is fag priests. And so he asks him, okay, why is that your favorite sign? And his, like, I, his literal answer is, well, I don't know much. And, like, they just cut because, like, he has nothing else to say. Like, he just, I don't know. That's just my, doesn't right, know. Of course. Just doesn't know. Because he's a child. Um, he's just uh, copying what just doesn't doing, know. Yeah, he's just copying his parents. They can't fucking read. They're well, not. I like that one because it's green. And that's my favorite no. color. Also, I'm eight. Yeah. <laughs> also, I'm eight. I also like trucks. Um, 
Those are cool. Yeah, Those are like the, the fire trucks are pretty neat. Yeah. Um, um, upon interviewing a member of the church in the same documentary, uh, he <laughs> asked whether, oh, in, uh, in Brainwashed, he asks one of the moms, is it okay for, like, a kid to be protesting before, like, you know, they really can say whether or not they want to protest, right? And she said, that's like asking them to go to school before they've gone to school. Repeat that. that. Do you, like, why should these kids who don't really, like, they're not in a position to say whether or not they want to go, why should you make them go? Right. And she said, that's like asking them to go to school before they've gone to school. Yeah. Um, so Livy went further saying the church had complete control over everything they did. This was actually really scary to me. Um, Whoa. If you got in trouble, uh, no one was allowed to talk to you. You would be in complete isolation, right? What cult? Um, what constitutes getting in trouble? Like you- Speaking in a way that wasn't allowed, talking to something that wasn't allowed, like complete wow. isolation, right? And like even externally, uh Denise Hall, an editor in chief at Topeka News, said that they'd received facts after facts from the WBC that she just said were horrific. She didn't explain what they were, but like if you disagreed with the church, they would send facts after facts um to the to the news. Um one example I saw in Fall from Grace were these pamphlets, they would just like they would literally like send hundreds of copies to the Topeka News. Not, like, once, wow. and, like, let it sit. And the sure. pamphlets were called Fag Facts on why you shouldn't tolerate homosexuality, right? So just, like, belligerent badgering and, like, sure. character assassination inside and outside the church. Right. Um, just, like, a primer. Um, oh, um, Libby said that when they would travel to be interviewed to protest... They would, as a group, before the protest start, discuss what they would say. And this is her quote. She says, we would all have the same answers because they were really big on everyone is of one mind and one accord. So we all have to say the same thing. So, like, mm-hmm. you, you, this is like, this is what you are going to say. No wiggle room. Like, everything's pre-approved. Everything's pre-rehearsed. So if you listen to interviews, they're all saying the exact same thing. Because it's so much more organized than I thought it was. Yeah, well, they, they want everybody to be on the same page. They want everyone like to be kids. a unit. They want everyone to be a, a single form, a single identity, a single thing. It um, right. reduces individuality. No, yeah. Wow. And, like, in Fall from Grace, the interviewer asked the kid, who's, like, probably, like, 10 years old, maybe less, mm. why he hates the troops. And he says the phrase, they fight for fags and come home in body bags. Like, obviously, 10-year-olds don't come up with that line. Right. They, what, you, he, mean, you mean you didn't say that when you were 10? Right. I mean, on my MySpace, I could check, but, like... <laughs> Um, that was bad okay (laughs) and so uh additionally and this is something i read in an article um this was something that like i also want to say is really important for these kids uh the church teaches that the world is beyond saving and like everyone born into the family is born in because they're the only select few that will go to heaven uh steven hassan who is a mental health counselor and and a researcher on cults um, says this is really effective because it convinces them that they're special and right. leaving the cult, they'd lose their specialness and like potentially like they'd their be salvation. eternally damned. Right. Right. Um, so like, not only like, are they afraid of the solitude, the character assassination, they, they have what is called phobia indoctrination. So sure. they're afraid to leave. Right. Um, that'll convince well, you. Know, you. It's really, yeah. it's really interesting because when you, um, introduced your topic, I was like, I was gonna do this topic, but I don't think it's culty enough, you know? Because I didn't, I didn't see the Westboro Baptist Church as a true cult, but yeah. Oh God, are, they are a yeah, cult. No, it's yes. oh man, are they? They are a cult. Oh God, it gets so worse. This is where this podcast is about to officially not be funny anymore. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, we're on Can't page wait. four. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, like, communist China, full of laughs. But um, genocide, we can all laugh about. Also, but, Oh, never mind, this is laughs. ten pages and we're on page five. So, going yeah, forward, um, this is where you're about to feel a nice, hot fucking take of human empathy. All right. Um, the entire family is completely isolated and doesn't associate right. with anyone outside of the church. Really quick um, question, is anyone in the church who isn't part of the family? 
Um, there's one family, and I didn't have time to talk about this one single family, but the dad's a piece of shit, and his daughter has already left the church after she turned 18. Go on. Go figure. Yeah, he actually did a documentary <laughs> called Hate Mongers, and changed from being a normal human being to joining the church. Mm. I don't like him. Seems a little sociopathy, but I just didn't have time to cover it. So there's one no family. Okay, one family. So all right. Yeah, everyone else is all descended from Fred. Um, so wow. just wow. to double down on them not talking to others, they raised the kids telling them that everyone outside of the church hates them. And if it seems like they don't hate them, they're lying because they hate them in their hearts. Nothing like a little social alienation. Oh, yes. Um, yes. And so I actually assumed that they would be homeschooled, right? Um, but they're actually all, uh, they all attend public school, which hmm. in, in a way is even more isolating. Yeah. Um, I'd actually prefer if they were homeschooled because at least they were like in their niche. Um, yeah. But it's even worse because, you know, they go to normal school and, like, the purpose of them going to normal school is, like, one Shirley Phelps daughter, Fred, um, she, you know, not only she feels like I can't, I just can't do it justice, she has, like, ten kids as well, but she said the purpose is it's kind of like a, like a religious testimony, hate, like, facing non-believers. Yeah, that's a thing in the church. Yeah. For sure. Also, so, um, I think it's, it creates a truth for them. In the sense that if they're seeing mm -hmm. kids who don't really understand what a cult mentality is and what it's like to be brainwashed with that severity, and those kids are just yeah. hearing all the awful things that the church has to preach, right? Totally fair yeah. and valid. Hate those kids. Those kids were probably bullied beyond recognition. Like... Oh, oh yeah. So that's... No, you... You're yeah, about to possible. hear some sad shit. Right. Um, no. but so, that's why so in Most Hated Family in America, uh, I talked about this a bit earlier, Thoreau asks Shirley um, if her kids had any friends at school as she's going to pick them up. And she said, like, you can hear in her voice that she was really sad and she was trying to hide it, mm -hmm. but her yeah. response was they have acquaintances. Um, and then talked about how no one would ever go to their house or hang out with them. And, like, she said it in this way of, like, I mean, obviously no one's going to come over to our house and hang out with us. But, like, that's also really fucking sad. Like, she anticipates no one wants to see them. Which is fair. Like, I wouldn't. I'm going to be I honest. I mean, they, right? they probably wouldn't let anyone over anyway. Right? Yeah, yeah honestly, it sounds like they neighbors. would let people over. No, they would let people over. Mm. Huh. But... Nobody wants to come over, which is even sadder. Yeah. Um, and so, Not unexpected, but sure. Right, and I wouldn't go over to the house. But, like, even worse, so, like, remember that phrase, they have acquaintances. So, like, yeah. her oldest daughter, he goes um, to college with her, like, while, you know, he's interviewing her. And he says, hey, like, do you have friends at school here? And she goes, I have acquaintances. Which is just, huh. like, obviously she got that from her mom. Which, like, almost in a way, I, I just feel like... You know, they come home and they're like, hey, everybody else has friends. Why don't I have friends? And the response is, well, you know, you don't have friends there. You have acquaintances, but they're never going to be your friend. Right. Yeah, I think that that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I think they're setting these kids up to never have friends. Right. Um, which has got to be fucking rough. Yeah, um, that's depressing. Uh, and so I have a clip that I'm going to play. Um, of two of Phelps's granddaughters talking about going to school. Uh, just listen to them talking about um, having friends and everything like that. So basically your circle of friends is, is mainly or exclusively limited to people who are part of this church. Is that exactly. fair to say? Yeah. Could you, I mean, any friends out, do you have any friends that are outside this, this group? Nobody that we consider a true friend because friendship with the world is enmity with God. May I ask if you've had boyfriends, either of you? No, we haven't. Ooh. Why not? Because that's not what we're about in this life. We're not about serving ourselves. And it's a vacation that's not needed and takes up time that we just don't have. So. <sighs> They're so smug. Yeah, and it's also one of those things where that's a really common thing, too. He talks to another one of the granddaughters. I think her name is Gail. Mm -hmm. um, and she says that she'll never get married because in her eyes we're so close to the end of times. She doesn't have time to distract herself with something that she believes doesn't matter. Which is... <sighs> That's... I mean, yeah. It and, makes... like, there's an interview with Gail at the end where, like, he keeps asking her, like, don't you feel lonely? And, like, you can see that she is, and you can tell that in her tone that she is, but she just wears this happy, chipper face 
And no, I'm very happy. I'm very much doing this. Like they all have that mentality. When I watched a ton of documentaries, all of them, like when you push them hard enough, you see the doubt, right, but they course. would never admit it. Um, and so you remember like when I did communist China, they had those meetings where they would prosecute people. Yeah. They have the same things here. Um, they, Libby, uh. yeah, Libby, the reason Libby left was she had gone on a vacation, um, and she was in a bikini, they took a picture, and her grandparents are like, oh, show me the picture of, like, you know, where you went, and so she sent a picture of her and her friends in her bikini, right, still probably very conservative, and the grandparents had put it up in the front of the church, and then at the end of church, she realized that it was moved to the back of the pictures, um, and, like, then she was led into this room where they discussed her behavior and whether it was godly. Um, Tim Phelps in a documentary said he likened it to like verbal stoning. Oh you would just God. be gathered in a room of all the elders in a big circle around you and attacked. Um, just another parallel to like communist China. Everything is communist yeah. China. Wow. <laughs> um, Oh, boy. Okay, so we're going to talk about leaving the church. We're going to start with the boomerang effect. And I want to talk about this at the end, because, like, I feel like everybody I saw in the documentaries responds to, um, responds to these people with hate and vitriol. Um, right, of course. And this does not make them want to leave the church. And then I think, basically, they've been programmed very well that whenever they receive hate... Um, the followers of God in the Bible received hate for speaking God's word. Sure. So therefore, they're receiving hate because they're speaking God's word. Yeah. Um, That's like straight up out of the Bible. Right. And so Shirley says she has literally no interest in changing people's minds and seeking more converts. Like, that's not their end goal, which I thought it was. Like, they were trying to angrily yell at people to convince them that they were right. They could not give less fucks oh, if people believed them or not. They believe that they're right, and any response that's angry proves their point to themselves. Oh, 100%. But also, this is because of the fact that they want to see themselves as special. The people who are already right. innately in the church are the special good ones, and the whole world, the rest of it, is, is the bad place, right? It's, the it's again, the cult mentality of us versus them. Right. And, but, um... So, wait, what is their end goal, then? Their end Just goal to yell is to or? preach the word of God. That is it. They couldn't care what less to what end. Because usually, like, preaching is, is a matter of conversion, right? They don't, they won't want converts, they just want to preach the word of God because they have been sent to this earth to preach God's word because we're close to the end of times. Right. Um, just like... So, here's, here's my theory. Yeah. So... Um, our pal Fred is out of the job. You know, he, he, he gets disbarred. Uh, he's strapped for cash. He's not a very good preacher. He's not very effective. Not super popular. Um, needs money. Starts in with the, with the God hates fags. Starts getting attention for his more radical beliefs. And realizes if I take this to the nth degree... I can start getting interviews, I can start getting attention, and I can start making money. And I think that that's where this started. Uh, definitely. And I don't disagree with you. I think that's definitely a big thing. There is another theory that his daughter talks about, but, like, that, for me, hits the nail on the head. Yeah. Um, right? And, like, that's what's important for him. And, like, so at this point, all of his family, however, has been grown up, like, you are special, you are chosen, you're the only sure. ones going to heaven, right? Like, they love being hated because to them it's affirmation that they're doing God's will. Um, so, like, I've quoted the most hately family in America, like, multiple times. It was a really good right. documentary. Um, upon its release, Shirley had an issue with it, not for anything to do with the portrayal. She thought the portrayal was very fair. She just wished that the name of the documentary had been The Most Hated Family in the World. All right. Right. <clears throat> um, so, again, but this all comes down to their entire life. Like, I'm sure, like, they had the doubts of, like, but people are angry, but people hate us, and, like, they've just been told and regurgitated, no, that just shows that we're right. Mm. Right? Yeah. Um which is just a programming things. 
one of Phelps's 13 kids that left is Nathan. And like, I'm just going to say straight up, this paragraph is, is dark. Um, so comparatively, yes. Um, Great. so Nathan, um, paints a very different picture of Fred. Uh, he discusses his time living at home marked with physical and emotional abuse, vigorous exercise and diet plans. Cause Nathan hmm. is kind of heavier. Um, and just like a constant spewing of hate. Um, his mother was aware of the abuse and he said like from an early age, he remembers her keeping him like as far away from their father as possible. Right. Wow. Um, but she could only protect them from so much. Um, they would be regularly beaten, flogged as Mark Phelps, another ex member said, um, his father in Mark's opinion, definitely enjoyed beating some kids more than others. One of them included Nathan. Uh, this is really fucked up. So Nathan said he used a barber belt to beat him, right? Huh, um, and okay. he beat them so frequently with this belt that the ends frayed, oh. and then the strings would lacerate and cut the skin. Yeah, because that's just like a homemade flogger. Right. Um, so he, according to Nathan, Nathan believes that he only jumped into the civil rights cases for the money and the fame. Like... He really didn't give a fuck about black people. For um, sure. Which Absolutely. really just adds to this idea that his father is kind of a narcissistic, angry megalomaniac. Um, I will go with that. Another quote is from Mark. He said that uh, he defended black people, you know, for the same reason he protested in public, he wanted fame. So Mark really does believe this is all for fame. Um, yeah, uh, no, so I agree. Nathan, upon leaving... Uh, the house, he left literally the second he turned 18. Like, he said he sat on his uh, stairs and stared at the living room clock, and the second it became midnight on his 18th birthday, he left. Wow. Um, he, upon, you know, leaving, he was diagnosed with PTSD. He was admitted to a psychiatric oh, hospital. Lord. Um, so he had a lot of shit to deal with, but, like, the reason I bring him up is, you know, now he's an advocate for the LGBTQ community. He speaks at numerous atheist events and conventions. So, like, he, you know, he, it's evident that, like, these people aren't born bad. They're raised right, in a bad environment. Course. Right. Um, yeah. At an atheist event, he was approached by Richard Dawkins, who asked why his father has never been arrested. Right? Because, like, from an outside perspective, like, you're being flogged. Yeah, that's a fair question. You know, somebody should be arrested. And his response, and this is his exact quote, his, as bright as Dawkins is, I don't think he understood the power of religion here in America, that the law turns a blind eye to a lot of this really insane stuff. So that suggests to me that the cops had been called and nothing yeah. was done. Yep. Um, in I, my only experience with um, police officers directly, um, I... I, I asked for a police escort to get into uh, somewhere to get my belongings, and they talked to the person that I was afraid of first, and then when they came back out, they said that they were going to leave because they, quote, seemed reasonable enough. Woo! Police. Gotta love them. Um, Gotta love them. Are you em. fucking serious? Yeah, yeah, it was my one experience with police oh, officers. Oh, wow. Cool, 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 yeah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, so the b abuse didn't end at the kids. Um, so I read somewhere that, like, a congregant very early on, and Fred's, you know, being a pastor, asked his Fred what to do about a failing marriage, and Fred told him that the Bible supported beating one's wife. Yes, it does. So <laughs> this is clear if he believes that. He was beating his wife, and this is another... Mm. Very graphic one, so skip 15 seconds if you don't want to hear it. Um, they were fighting, and he pushed her down the stairs so hard that when she grabbed the railing to hold herself from falling down, she pulled her arm out of her socket. <gasps> Holy fuck. Um, so Dortha Phelps is another one of his daughters who left the church. In, in the documentary Fall from Grace, two out of the four kids that left the church from his kids... Um, two of them consented to be interviewed, and that was Nathan and Dortha. Um, Dortha said uh, that he truly believed that children and wives were in subjugation to the husband, obviously. Uh, she said, and so this is interesting, she said in her opinion, looking back in hindsight, 
um, considering how abusive and angry he was, she thinks he's a rageaholic and was like so hmm. addicted to being angry. Um, it's possible. Her words were so addicted to living in a world with rage that he couldn't live in a world without it. Um, Nathan also confirms this, uh, saying that when he couldn't beat them, he abused his clients. Probably one <laughs> of the reasons he got disbarred. Um, and then Nathan says he probably, once he got disbarred, he had to turn his anger somewhere and he chose the church. Right. Um, Nathan Popular truly believes choice. his, his father believes everything he believes in, like everything he preaches, he believes in, but it's coming from a deep hurt, which I, you know, again, I, I can't find a lot on his childhood, right? but I see, I predict something had happened. Um, what with all this masculinity Sure, garbage. Yeah. Um, Dortha, interestingly enough, says she can't be mad at him uh, because she's so convinced that he's sick um, that she said, in her words, being mad at him would be like pushing down a cripple. Like, that's how oh sick that she thinks he is. Um, you know, she grew up with him, so I assume she has some kind of understanding of him that I don't have. Right. Um, and, you know, it's really fucked up because all these kids are rationalizing all of this abuse as, like, being justified in the Bible. So they're not going to complain or report this because he said, like, no, God said this. It's in the Bible. You believe in the Bible, don't you? Um, right. And, and <clears throat> Dortha said, you know, he embodied God in, in their eyes. Um, so getting disapproval from him meant getting disapproval from God. Uh, at least in her experience. And both, oh. yeah, both Nathan and Dortha talked about how afraid they were of God. Um, and like, right, I'm, I'm sure it's just how he embodied it. Um, yeah. A lot of people conflate God with their father figures, which is yeah. super interesting and something we don't have time to go into. <laughs> but yeah, another that makes a time. lot of sense. Right. <laughs> another time. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I talked about Libby. Um, she hasn't spoken to her family since she left. Uh, Libby claims that her grandfather was charismatic and sweet, but Mark said in another interview it took him about 10 years of being outside the church to fully come to terms with everything. So she's only been out of the church for a few years. Hmm. So I, I wonder how all of these kids will feel after they take time to unpack it. Yeah. No, I also wonder how much of their time is repressed. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I wouldn't be shocked if it was yeah. most of it. Um, another example, Zach, another grandson. Uh, he was kicked out. This is insane. He was kicked out because his parents refused to treat a back injury, claiming prayer would fix it. So when he went to go treat his back, um, he came home and all his stuff was at the curb. <gasps> so he's never had the opportunity to say goodbye to his parents. <laughs> Which oh is insane. Um, yeah, Zach, Zach has much to say, but, like, the person I really want to focus on, and, like, this is literally the entire reason um, that I did this topic, was one girl who left, and that's Megan Phelps Roper. Um, okay. She's Shirley's daughter, and, like, I really mm -hmm. want to, like, prime this. She was literally the next in line to be in charge of the church. Um, Shirley huh. is, like, the main figurehead for the church right now. Um, and then her daughter, I believe Megan is like her oldest or second oldest daughter or something. And like, she was just like at her elbow. Like everyone expect Megan to take control of the church once Shirley died. Right. right? And she left at the age of 26. Wow. Um, and she did literally the best Ted talks I've ever seen about how she left the church and um, how she learned to love. And it's like completely fucked with my worldview. This is why wow. I had this like revelation um, over the past couple days, and, like, I really wish I could play the whole thing, but I can't, because it's 15 minutes. Um, mm. I'm just gonna play, like, a little bit of a clip at a later, but, like, essentially to distill it down, she was in charge of manning the WBC's Twitter account, um, sharing the protest schedule, responding to people online, blah, 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 um, and she said, like, most of the people she met online were, you know, hateful, angry people, and it was nothing unlike the people that yelled at her at protests, right? So she didn't really, nothing new, right? Right, um, yeah. But she said there were, like, a few people, one of them was a blogger, a guy from uh, 
Julicious is the name of his blog. blog. I forget <laughs> his name. Um, but she said they would get into arguments, but, like, he would also treat her with respect. He asked her questions about why she believes what she does. Mm. Um, and she said it was really disarming because, like, again, like, her entire life she'd been told, like, no one would the outside from the outside would like her. So... You know, if all of these people were being nice to her and, like, genuinely asking her why she believes what she believes, it's like following a trail of breadcrumbs. Well, if this isn't true, what else am I wrong about, right? Right. Um, and they talk about it a bit on last podcast on the left. Leaving a cult, you have to admit, like, not just this thing was wrong, all of it's wrong. Right, your entire Which is really life. hard for people to, you know, to come to terms with. Right. So, um, she actually... Fun fact, she married that guy. The guy who, like, started it all, unraveling oh. it all. Um, which is so sweet. Um, yeah. And, you know, she talks about all her second guessing. And, you know, him being so nice to her caused her to leave. Which is insane. Like, that genuine kindness deprogrammed someone, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so Zach, who I talked about earlier, who's the one who left from the back injury, he said in an interview, the interviewer asked, like, how his family would react to love. And I just want to read his quote verbatim. Uh, his quote is, since they believe they're supposed to be hated, loving them would prove them wrong. And once the church realized they were wrong, he says, their entire belief system would collapse and they would be forced to renounce their religious convictions. The policy of excommunication would fall by the wayside. They would, in other words, be saved. Um, mm -hmm. So again, so really the message is, is these kids have grown up to hate their world and say like really disgusting things. Um, you know, and if I were, <laughs> I don't know if I were to ever be able to have conversations with, you know, these people, because again, I'm, I'm a human being too. And it's really tough to talk to someone this, this vindictive. Mm. Um, but like just the fact that simple human kindness had a profound impact on multiple members. Um, and this is literally the reason that this keeps me up at night. Um, I, I, I think she summarizes it best. So I'm just going to play a little clip from her TED Talks. This has been at the front of my mind lately because I can't help but see in our public discourse so many of the same destructive impulses that ruled my former church. We celebrate tolerance and diversity more than at any other time in memory, and still we grow more and more divided. We want good things, justice, equality, freedom, dignity, prosperity. But the path we've chosen looks so much like the one I walked away from four years ago. <sighs> It's just, it's haunting to me that she, she, you know, she spent 26 years in that church, right? Yeah. Um, and she says she feels as if she hasn't left her church when she sees how people react to certain things and how they interact with those they disagree with. This is the same girl who, when he asked, you know, the daughter of Shirley, like, do you have friends at school? She said, no, I have acquaintances. Like, this is the same one. Mm -hmm. Um and so, like, yeah, like, looking at this, like, reading this, I said fag more times reading this out loud than I have in my entire life, you know, combined. Right. And um, they've done really terrible things, but, like, this entire time I was reading this and, like, reading personal anecdotes, like, I just kept coming back to this question, how much can I hate someone for being a product of their environment, especially an environment they're not in control of? Um and, like, I, I, I didn't think I would end an episode talking about, like, the most hateful group in the planet by saying something like this. But, like, you know, watching her TED Talk, reflecting on how abused these people have been, like, it just seems to me like they're not, they weren't given a lot of opportunity to do something different. And, like, everybody who has left has lived normal lives or have been activists. And, like, I just feel like this is a really radical example of you know, if we just react to people in day-to-day -day living with the same generosity that people gave to her when listening to, you know, somebody who disagreed with them, like, I feel like a lot in this world can be resolved and we could be a lot politer to each other. Yeah. Um, but again, it's, it's one of those things where we can't get everybody to agree on that. It has to be a trickle effect. Um, yeah, as with anything... Uh, the thing that's so hard about that, though, is is that 
people will argue, and I'm sure people will argue yeah. here, um, that that places a disproportionate amount of the responsibility on victims, right. essentially. Like, when we're talking about um, Megan here, the, the guy who engaged her mm-hmm. was Jewish. Yeah. One of the people, one of a group of people who the Westboro Baptist Church had marginalized, yeah. had abused. And I would never, or I guess I, I, I don't think I could ever place the responsibility to engage her on his, on his shoulders. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, it's very sticky because no, yes, yes I, I agree that, um, if, if she hadn't been engaged politely, then it's possible that things might have never changed, and that's tragic. Yeah. Um, but I guess it's it's difficult to gauge where people aren't allowed to be angry. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what the answer is. Um, obviously, in a perfect world, we would all just be angels 100% of the time. Yeah. Um, but I, we're talking about cycles of abuse that are... They, they're reflective upon themselves. Yeah. Um, so, you're, you know, you're talking about abused people who abuse other people, and then those abused people have to, like, talk them out of it. Yeah. And that's... That's difficult. Right? Yeah, this is this is definitely... This is the most radical example of that, and, like... Sure. You know, yeah. but, like, I feel like this also extends to, like, you know, even me talking to somebody about, like, minimum wage, I think it's really, really easy to, like, automatically assume, like, the person who's saying, no, we shouldn't raise minimum wage, or just, like, in any example of anybody that disagrees with you, like, assume they're coming from a negative place just because that oh. opinion is different than yours. Well, yeah, of course, because um, everybody feels sort of tied personally to their opinions, yeah. and disagreement is an attack. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, so much of this is articulated in her TED Talk, which I, you know, I can't copy and paste it. Um, right. But, you know, one, one of the most instrumental things she said that really stuck out to me is, like, we often forget that human beings are the result of a lifetime of experiences. And we all see things differently because we've experienced everything differently. So, mm-hmm. at the very least, in, in doing this, this research... Um, I don't know. I just feel so empathetic towards everybody in this group because, like, they were literally physically abused and, like, trapped in this cycle of, like, a giant yes tank. Um, Everyone who has left has never had contact with their family again. You are not allowed to interact with them, which is hard. Um, Right. Right. Just, you know, I don't know, I feel bad, and I, I wish I could be angry, because it would be easier for me to just be like, oh man, fuck these people, but, like, I just see hurt people hurting people, mm. you know? Yeah. <sighs> um, and I think, I think it's a bit of both for me, um, where it's like, you know, you, you come away from being a victim of abuse, and you can acknowledge these are people who were victims of abuse, and are doing the things that they're, they're doing because they were abused. Um, but that doesn't really change my stance of fuck these people and what they're doing. Um, because, like, at the end of the day, yes, they are conditioned, but they are also aware. You know? Like, when I do something that stems from toxic coping mechanisms that I, I learned growing up, I'm aware that I'm doing that. And I do it anyway. See, the thing is, I honestly don't believe they're they're aware. But like, you know, when when you see how these people get interviewed and interact, like they believe they're one hundred percent in the right. Like they can't understand how they could be, you know, doing this because they're abused. Like most of the kids think that, like, oh, good old Gramps. They literally call him Gramps. Right. You know. <laughs> so like, you know, it's it's that lack of awareness which makes me feel bad, and it's see? also one of those things where like. I'm very fortunate to have been able to afford and go through therapy that makes me aware of when I do shitty things. But, like, I think, you know, we all know of at least one person who's, like, a compulsive liar or just, like, (laughs) kind of shitty and kind of toxic, and they are legitimately unaware that they're doing anything wrong. And, like, I, you know, I was talking with a friend about this, and, like, he said, you know, it is possible to hate the actions and not the actor. 
you know, and I feel like that's kind of where I stand. Like they're doing shitty things and there's nothing that I can say that excuses what they're doing and going to funerals and like tying the American flag around their leg and stomping on it. Like it's always going to make me angry, but like, yeah, of course, you know, I just can't hate them as people. Cause I just feel bad. Yeah. I think, I think that's a fair place to be coming from. What like I will always abhor those actions. Yeah, always. A hundred percent. Um, I honestly, I, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely a hard issue, right? Because it's like, (laughs) you're, you're conditioning through your entire life is, and you're, cause there's, God, they're so isolated. You know what I mean? Like they're so entrapped in their own group and their own, in their cult, their literal, like going back to the, what the true purpose of the episode is, is that like, they are a cult. There's no denying that they're not a cult, right? Um, and I think the biggest aspect of cult thinking is um, brainwashing, right? It's it's manipulating somebody's psycho- psychology, their social interactions, their way of life. Every single aspect of that person and their personality is is based off this hate speech, off this this rhetoric that they've been hearing their whole life. Right. That being said, like y- y- watching some of the footage of of that. Um, the the woman who had left the church right and how when he was asking her about like does she have time for boyfriends and stuff or like just you know and like um she was like no like god no or whatever but you can kind of like you can kind of see it like she she is lonely and like the stuff that you were saying like the the acquaintances like how she grew up like something innately had to be wrong in her heart for her to for her to be that way and for her to leave the church you know what i mean so i think yeah. that you can acknowledge that and that you can say, hey, like, I'm, something's wrong in me and I'm going to abandon everything for the, for the possibility of a happier life and a, and a better existence, but leave yeah. everything I know behind, all my family, all my acquaintances, everybody, to possibly be sent to hell, right? And it, it's like, the, so yeah. it's, it's so fearful. So it's like, but they do it anyway because they they know that something's wrong. So I think that right. like if you know that and I think the thing go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Um but I was just going to say like if you know that in your heart that like something ingrained in you is wrong and you're still using that red like I don't know. I feel like well cuz like yeah. sorry. I I just like the thing is, you know, the the people who've left, like, all of them, like, when they're interviewed, they're like, I'm so sorry, like, and I can't ever take it back, and no apologizing is ever gonna take this off the internet, right. like, you know, the girl who does the TED Talks is like, there's literally nothing I could do to undo the interviews that I've already done, but, like, she feels bad. Um, the, the, for the most part, every interview where you have someone that is still in the church is very convinced that they're 100% in the right. The only person that I ever, ever got, like, the doubting of her being there was that one girl, Gail, who, um, uh, she, she was the one who said, I'd never have a boyfriend because there's much more important things and, like, we're close to the end of times. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and he asks her, like, he says, have you ever had doubts about being in the church? Um, And I'm pretty sure he asked that to, like, the two other girls, and they laughed, and they're like, no. But, like, her her response was, if I did, I wouldn't tell you about it. And, like... Huh. So... That's a yes. So, but the tone... But the tone in her voice was very, like... How can I explain it? Because I can't can't get the clip, clip up and running right now. But it was basically, they were alone in the car. He was interviewing her. He kept pressing her on it. She was holding back tears and said... Like, no, I'm not going to think about that. We're not going to think of our mistakes. We can only move forward as human beings, like, getting very angry. Yeah, it's manipulation. Um, Yeah. And, like, you know, it is one of those things where, like, I think she probably did have the moment where she doubted it. But, again, if she leaves, she leaves all of her family, which is, like, this is a big family, Right. right? This was 13 primary kids. Each child had about 10 to 13 kids and then now those kids are having kids so everyone you ever know you're never allowed to ever see again 
Um, and I'm sure other stuff happened, and I'm, I'm going to assume the experience is she doubted it, she thought about it, considered how much she had to lose, and just had to double down and tell herself that she was in the wrong for ever doubting God's word. Yeah, and we're going to get those people in the comments who are going to be like, well, it's not harder than being gay and dying for being gay. And, like, you're fucking right. Of course it's not. But, yeah. like, when your entire life is these people, like, yeah. they were isolated. They only had their family. That's it. Yeah. I mean, like, imagine the entire world that you live in right now in all of its, like, complexity the world you've got, the the job you might have, the school you go to, the friends you have, your family. Imagine losing all of it. Yeah. And potentially your salvation if that's in yeah. your in your right. repertoire of things. These people are brainwashed. Like, that's everything. Yeah. No, these people are brainwashed and are are people in the church use fear. They're they're afraid. They're scared. And I think that you like granted I none absolutely zero of their actions are okay, right? No, like, abs- no absolutely Yeah, I don't not. want anyone to get the feeling that we're apologists for no, 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 what, no, no, no. what West Baptist Church. No, 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 absolutely not. Fucked up shit. Um, <laughs> I also, I, I totally forgot to add, I skipped over it. Um, so you might be wondering why he also, uh, Nathan left at 12 in the morning the second he turned 18. One, legally he wouldn't be able to be forced back. Forgot to mention that if Fred's if Fred found out you left, he would physically find you and drag you back to the house. That's fucking terrifying. Um, so that's what he did to his primary kids. So I, I think now <laughs> he's old. Oh, also forgot. Now that now that we're like tying it up with a little bow. Fred was excommunicated from the church. Cool. <laughs> um, for the reason you might not think. I think what happened... God, like, that's the fucking theme of this dude's life. Um, yeah, so what happened was, what I'm assuming is, I don't know, I feel like y'all both have, you know, grandparents, um, but when people get old, they get reflectful and apologetic for when they were mm. shitty. Hey, what he did something new about was, you every day. <laughs> uh, he started going to protesters and telling them that they were right and apologizing. Uh-oh. And... They dragged him inside of the church, excommunicated him, and he's not allowed to talk. He was not allowed to talk to anybody until the day he died. He died. Wow. Um, which is good news. But also one of those mm-hmm. things where I know that happened because, what is it? It was Zach. Zach said he was in the meeting the day they decided to excommunicate him. Wow. Right. So, like... Which is insane to me. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Um, but it's, you know, again, that is the fucking founder of the church. And the founder of the church was saying, hey, you know, whether it's genuine or not, was saying the words, hey, maybe we're wrong. Maybe we should be kinder. Obviously, he's losing family members. Whether or not he meant it, right, aside, their response was to excommunicate the founder of the church. So wow. really no bar for, like... Banning family members. There's just, they don't fucking care. If you decide to not listen to us, you're being damned to hell and you're not allowed to associate with us. So. Jesus. I mean, like, the stakes are high. I can't blame somebody for being afraid to leave and, like, ever, like, all of these people, like, the, the fact that two out of the four people that left, um, you know, and were Fred's, you know, children... Only two of them wanted to be interviewed, and they left in, like, the 80s, 70s and 80s, and they still right, don't want to yeah. be in the public eye. You know? Yeah. yeah. Man, I just feel bad. So, <sighs> yeah. Feels so, bad, man. Feels bad. Bad man, shitty person, apparently excommunicated from his own church. Uh, that's not what keeps me up at night. What keeps me up at night is that simple human kindness is the way, you know, they were able to deprogram a woman who spent 26 years in a cult. And I don't know, I started getting really anxious and everybody's angry all the time and I couldn't watch the news for like three straight days. And, and here I am. heart grew three times larger that day. I fucking did! I'm so <laughs> emotional! Oh my I'm god. I'm so proud of you, you little Grinch. But like, like, one thing I will say though that I did feel like I 
got from this is like I picked up a mentality she said there is like you know she said everybody's a sum of their experiences I've started like going out of my way when I hear somebody that I disagree with I go out of my way to find out why they believe that thing and then I just feel less angry because it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know what? I disagree with you on the far as not raising the minimum wage, but I understand that because <laughs> of your upbringing, that's why you believe the way that you believe that. But I disagree with you and, you know, whatever. Let's agree to disagree. I've become very floppy, like a, a noodle cooked past al dente. So, oh, man, I'm not floppy. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm not floppy. At all, like I, I, I think, I think the the place where I'm at where is that I can I can understand that people are you know sums of their parts and whatever, um, and can even appreciate that, have empathy for, um, but when it starts, I think I don't think I can take a stance of agree to disagree when it starts hurting people. You know. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I, I feel like we can, th- this is such a good episode and such a good topic that it's, we can break this down. Um, uh, I think everything that the Westboro Baptist Church does is wrong. And I think that I can't take a stance on how people should or shouldn't react to that. Um, yeah. What I can say is that I'm going to start being nicer to people who have different opinions than me and just try to understand them more. And that's what I can do. I don't think I'm going to wa- run into a rest borough Baptist church member um, pretty soon. No. T- tomorrow. <laughs> I li- oh, I would, I, oh, I'll, I'll post it on, on Twitter if that's the case. <laughs> Live feed the conversation and be like, they just said this. Oh. Yeah, seriously God. though, watch that TED Talks, watch the rest of it. The whole thing really fucked me up. Is the documentary uh, readily available anywhere or do you have to buy that one? Um, so, uh, most hated people in America not that I'm saying um, watch it illegally but it might piracy is a crime kids no one's advocating for this but it might or might not be on YouTube for free okay Um, the Vice one is on YouTube for free I purchased Fall from Grace and really the only thing you're going to get out of it is they have a lot of first person interviews Mm. Mm. Um, cinematically it was uninteresting I didn't get a lot of new information that I didn't already have I think anything it's just it's really haunting to they've done two documentaries ever and that was most hated family in America um, was like a big one hate mongers I refused to watch because it was directed by who I believe to be a sociopath who is now part of the Westboro Baptist Church. Um, right. But Fall from Grace is I, I, I'd say your best bet is most hated family in America, which is Sick. definitely on YouTube. Um, also, but yeah, TED definitely Talks. watch that TED Talks. Mm-hmm. It'll put you in a good mood. And um, <laughs> I feel like we've all tied our bows and yeah, I think so. Be nice. Be loving. Not- I'm not responsible for uh, making you lose some sleep tonight. Uh, Sorry anyway, though. Yeah. All right, guys. It's been real. Sure has. Bye. Deuces.